met yet. My name is Dr. Brooklyn Storm. It is so lovely to see you today on this gorgeous Friday here in Melbourne, Australia. So I wanted to um, talk with you about four things to consider when it comes to hiring a supervisor to support you in your private practice, especially as a soul-led counsellor. Um, okay, so the first thing to look out for, and this is just my opinion, and I'm sure other people will have different priorities and different values, but I think these are the four key areas. First of all, you want to make sure that you're aware of your professional development, like understanding um, what you want to get out of the supervision and try and find somebody who connects with you on that level, making sure that they have the knowledge base and the skills base that aligns really beautifully with the knowledge and the skills that you want to acquire for your practice or that you want to learn how to integrate for your practice. So there needs to be that alignment there. A second one is to think about your goals for your supervision. So are you looking to have supervision for things like the direct client work, for that kind of case formulation, for all those sorts of processes? Or are you looking for more of a mentoring relationship um, with a supervisor that can support you in, you know, starting your private practice and getting that off the ground and making sure everything is there, you know? So um, that is really, really helpful as well. The next thing to think about is your preferred relational style. So, um, you know, therapeutic alliance is so important with, um, oh, like saying some things here, get, get tough and someone to challenge you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if when it comes to that relational style, we want to make sure that there's that therapeutic alliance there and that we get along with people. And yes, as Luke is suggesting, um, sometimes it can absolutely be helpful to have somebody to challenge you and somebody that can see your blind spots and help you um, shift your perspective and see old problems in new ways. So making sure that there's that click, because if that um, rapport isn't there and that relationship isn't there, it's going to be very difficult for you to experience the growth that you're seeking in terms of ongoing professional development. And then last of all, you know, um, and this comes up a lot, doesn't it, that financial consideration. And I think a lot of us lead by thinking what's the financial investment going to be. But I think when you do that, you're doing it at the cost of, um, you know, your supervisor's experience and their knowledge and their skills and your goals and all of those other reasons. Um, you know, I don't want you to do that because um, you need to achieve a certain number of clinical hours in order to maintain your memberships with places like ACA and PACFA and the APS and all of those sorts of good places. But at the same time, you don't want to go for the cheapest supervisor because if you're being guided by dollars, then that could impact, perhaps, not always, but it might impact, um, you know, these other three areas that are equally as important, okay? None of them is more important than the other. So I'm just encouraging you, if you're new to supervision, um, don't be guided by that investment. If you have queries about the fee and why your potential supervisor is charging that fee, ask them and they'll be more than happy to share with you their reasoning for that fee. There are also going to be um, some situations where perhaps you're from a rural area in Australia and you're needing um, a supervision and you know you notice that the supervision fees might be like this in that area but they might be like that over there. It's absolutely fine again to just check in and see what the going rate is in your area if you're having it face to face and, and locally and ask questions okay remember this is an important relationship that you're investing in and just like when you have clients come and work with you we want them to ask you about um, what they can expect with you and what it all looks like when they come and work with you you have that um, same I guess responsibility to yourself to make sure you're asking those questions of your supervisor before you lock yourself into any commitment and lastly 
I would also have a think about some organizations only want you to or only recommend, you know, a minimum of 10 hours of supervision. Um, but if somebody's suggesting to you, oh, well, hey, you know, I can support you with 12 hours, why would you say no to that? I mean, it doesn't kind of make sense. We want to, um, of course, meet our requirements with our different membership bodies. But you also are investing in this for your own growth, aren't you? And so we want to make sure that for your own growth, you're getting all of the support and all of the guidance that you need. So um, it's the beginning of a new year and some of you are looking for supervision for your practice. And if you'd like to explore what supervision with me might look like, all you need to do is head over to resources.brooklynstorm.com and you can go and have a look. There's a whole bunch of free stuff in there. There's low cost stuff and there's information about group and individual supervision. Um, so have a look around there and if anything resonates with you and you'd like some more information, of course, just send me a message. I'm also well connected with other supervisors. So if my approach doesn't fit with you, um, I may be able to connect you with somebody who might be a better match. I'm more than happy to do that. I think the most important thing is that you get the opportunity to experience your own growth as a private practice owner and as a counsellor um, so that you can be the best that you can be for your beautiful clients. Thank you so much for watching, for joining, and thank you very much, Luke, for participating and commenting today. Um, yeah, I'll see you next week, guys. Bye.